Good morning, and welcome back to Coffee and Bible Time. Today, you're going to be joining me on a get ready with me. As I sit down and get ready for my day here at college and just share with you guys what's been on my heart, what I've been learning in my quiet time, what God's been teaching me continually. Um, and we might even hear a little bit of chiming in from the one, the only, Ashley P. Nicole Cross. So allow me to read this, Philippians, as I get ready. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, and now as always with Christ, will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. So I'm just going to stop there. Um, this is the Apostle Paul talking. And so um, in his immediate context, of course, he I'm pretty sure he's in prison. Am I right? I think so. Yeah, in Philippians, he's in prison. Um, and it's really important when you're reading passages like this to, of course, read it in its original context um, and read it as if you are reading it like the author intended because Paul wrote this passage for the Philippians and not for us modern day readers. Um, so just remember, if you're struggling doing that when you're doing Bible reading, we have Bible study videos which we will have put in the card, the easy Bible study method. We have other Bible study methods as well that can help you guys remember to do that. But that's not really what I'm going to delve into in today's video because it's not really like a Bible study video. Um, I'm just going to say like what I was convicted by in this passage was Paul's fervor and um, integrity when it came to his body. And this is a theme that we talk about on our channel quite a bit. I'm just using some BB cream. Um, and that is how, how we are supposed to live knowing that our body is a temple to the Holy Spirit. And it says in this passage that Paul says, if I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Not only does he say that, but he also says he hopes that always in his life, Christ will be honored in his body. And sometimes I feel like it's really easy for us to try to honor God spiritually by doing a lot of spiritual things. Because we get in this mindset of like, oh, I want to please God today, so I'm going to do my quiet time um, for X amount of minutes, or I'm going to pray because I'm, I normally never pray, but I'm anxious and I want God to take this anxiety away. And, and don't get me wrong, like it's really important to pray, but it's almost like we over-spiritualize things because we think that somehow if we do things for Christ, that it will make him see us different or see us as more righteous than we were before when the reality is if we are already in Christ, if we're already um, in a saving relationship with God by trusting in him, you are not more righteous by doing things or by not doing things. And there isn't a disdain from God if you miss a quiet time or if you miss a prayer. He doesn't look at you like, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of going to withdraw from her a little bit to teach her a lesson because she hasn't done her quiet time in a couple days and um my his love is not fickle it doesn't it's just his love doesn't operate the same way that our human hearts operate in that sense what i was encouraged by was paul's reverence for living in a way where he wants to honor god in his body he said for me to live is to have fruitful labor for me to live is to honor Christ with my body. And so I kind of just kind of got on a little roll. I was like, because I was frustrated because I've been struggling with my um, 
eating disorder tendencies and I feel like this always happens to me like around finals week where I just kind of struggle to um, take my anxieties to God and I kind of latch on to them and um, me of little faith go to um, food to fix my problems which really honestly it's to numb my problems which I, I know that by now because I have been wrestling with this for a really long time. Um, I numb and then it's a cycle of shame and then it's a cycle of repeat. Um, and so when I was reading this passage, I was thinking about the body and I was like getting frustrated. I was like, why does Satan target the human body? Like, why does Satan want us to struggle with food of all things the most mundane part of our life the thing that is just meant to sustain us has become such a stumbling block for so many people if not with you know an eating disorder with potentially gluttony if not gluttony then potentially with um eating for the sole purpose of being thin or being praised um and a lot of people don't struggle with food, which is an amazing, amazing thing that God has blessed them with that. Um, but for those of us that do struggle with food, it's like, how do we remember? But there's other things that people do with their bodies. Like some people are addicted to alcohol or smoking yeah. or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sexual sin has to do with the body. Yes. So you're right. There it's are not just food. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things that Satan targets with our body. Yes, it can apply to many other people. But it's like, why does Satan target the body? Like, where do we just see the raw Satan? Where can we look to in scripture where we just see Satan targeting, attacking, destroying? Where do we see his heart behind um, why he tempts us and allures us? Um, and that's when I went to Genesis, because guess what happens in Genesis? The first fall of mankind, essentially the place where we see sin enter the world for the first time. Because before that, God's design was that we would be living in perfect harmony with him, in a full abiding relationship with him. And man chose sin over God that first sin of pride where they took the fruit because they wanted to know everything like like God did. And what I found to be quite fascinating was the concept that Satan chose to allure Adam and Eve with food. Have you talked about this on our channel, Ash? No, I don't think so. I don't know where, if I've heard this from somebody else before, I probably have. But it's just like a really interesting concept. It's so simple and yet so profound that food has such an alluring capability that it could literally cause the fall of mankind that we would eat in a way that doesn't glorify God, but that glorifies ourselves or makes ourselves the center. Um, and so I just wrote down a bullet point list of things that came to my mind when I was thinking about this passage number what does satan do number one satan gets man to question god's best for their lives that's the first thing that he does he asks them did real did god really say you know did god is god really looking after you by giving you a set of rules that are you know, he makes them see like, oh, the rules are constrictive. The rules are um, really meant to constrain you. And we do see that a lot today. Christians seeing the rules in God's word, seeing the Bible in general as a book of constraining rules that really aren't for our best. And that was the first thing that Satan did was he had them question um God's best for their lives because really if you look at Psalm 119 if you look at other passages in the Bible but especially Psalm 119 you see the reverence that we should have for God's word and that it is so good for us and that really God's word 
is to be treasured above all. Um, and for those of you who are wanting to delve more into your word, I highly recommend that you do that because this, his word is how we're going to see what God's best for our life is. Um, and number what two, was point number one, number one, no, point number one was Satan gets man to question God the best. Um, number two, Satan allures man through food. I, I already talked about that, but um, you guys, even if you don't struggle with food, know that there are so many people that do struggle with food. And so it's just best to look out for your brothers and sisters who do struggle with eating disorders or who struggle with food in general, like to understand that food does have a really big power and stronghold over people's lives. Um, and everything in, in the Bible is significant and we can't overlook the fact that Satan did tempt them through food. Number three, eating becomes a means of trying to fulfill a hole that only God was meant to fill. And for those of you who are coping with any, anything, but uh, wrongly or maladaptively, then you know that the way that you cope in a negative way you do because you convince yourself that that method of coping is going to help you through whatever you're going through instead of turning to God. Um, for me, it's like, oh, maybe I'll shoot up a quick prayer, but if I don't seek immediate relief, if I have to walk through that tension or that uncomfortableness of feeling my anxiety, then I will want to turn to those maladaptive behaviors and I'll want to turn to those ways of coping that I know actually leads me astray from God, that I know actually digs me deeper into a pit. And yet I do it anyway because in my heart I'm still treasuring this other idol that I have that I tell myself will help me cope, but it really doesn't. And so you see that Satan allures them in with this fruit telling them, oh, if you, if you eat this fruit, you know, you'll be like God, like, and then suddenly it makes Adam and Eve feel like the creator can't fulfill me, but his creation can. That does not make sense if you really sit down and think about that. And then I'll leave it off on four. The last thing is that food became selfish. And you see this with, once again, anything that God created for us can ultimately be turned into something selfish if we let it. It's like food is a good thing. All the, the gifts that God has given us, if it's a good gift, it's from God. That's biblical. All good things come from the Lord. However, in our fallen world, you see that good things become twisted because we're twisted. During the fall, everything changed. Everything did. And that includes the way that we treat and steward God's good gifts that he's given us, including food. Because now, I mean, even in the Garden of Eden, they couldn't just eat the, the food that God had given them. They had to eat the food that God said, don't eat. It's like, really? That simple mundane thing? It becomes selfish. It becomes, we can't just enjoy God the way that he designed us to enjoy him. Um, but yes, food became selfish and anything can become selfish. That is a good gift from God. You know, sexuality, like Ashley said, um, alcohol, if you overindulge in that. Um, family can become the way that you hold family or friends in your heart, if you hold that above God, that's a good gift that we are di distorting. Um, and sometimes we do hold people really highly in our hearts and they become idols for us. Just like how sex or food or anything can become idols. Um, body image, hello. Social media. Body image is such a toxic vortex for me. It's a toxic Social vortex. Media. Social media, like she said. Just so many things, so many different areas that Satan targets. And so that's what I've been thinking about lately. And I just thought I would share that with you guys. 
Um, I hope you feel like you learned something. Um, and I would encourage you to just prayerfully reflect over your life. First of all, I would say I love starting prayer with confession and then opening the floor for Thanksgiving and then um, bringing my needs to the Lord's feet in a place at a place of surrender. So I would just encourage you to pray um, after this reflectively and then also pray for somebody else that you know who is struggling. Um, share this video with somebody if you just feel like, listen, they've been under the attack of the enemy and you want them to hear this, share it. Give this video a like if you enjoyed a Get Ready With Me style. I'll link the products down below that I used for my face. Um, very simple today. I will say my blush is very out of date, so I won't be able to link that. But yes, very simple. And I will see you guys in our next video. Don't forget, we're doing Vlogmas, and it's going to be crazy on our second channel. Um, life is fun. Life is bubbly. Life is crazy right now. We're in college. Ashley has, oh, I don't know, a lover, a boyfriend. And so, yes, the second channel, it is fun. It's popping. And we'll see you guys over there. I love you. Bye.